Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945, ending World War II, and then suggest that anyone who would just... You don't think that's an evil act? Are you serious? I mean, I think we're so far removed. Do you understand the, the murder of 200,000 people? Innocent people. Most of the people uh, in Hiroshima and Nagasaki were not military people that were attacked. You, we can't agree that that's evil? What are we doing? Where, where are we getting our morals from? They didn't do anything. You have some type of rage inside of you that you got to deal with. Middle MAGA. So the Daily Wire does have a market. It's mostly anti-Trump. It's mostly conservative. And it's mostly pro-Israel. The goal of the group is so pro-Israel, the group will defend the dropping of nuclear bombs on citizens. Well, you could say the same about the atomic. This all stemmed from Tucker. Bomb, right? Yes, you could. And you could say that we have to develop it like Oppenheimer felt before the Nazis did. I love that. How'd that work? <laughs> How'd that work? Well, I love, by the way, that people on my side, I'll just say, I'll just admit it, on the right, you know, have spent the last 80 years defending dropping nuclear weapons on civilians. Like, are you joking? Right. That's just like prima facie evil. Yeah. If you can't, well, if we hadn't done that, then this, that, the other thing, that was actually a great savings. Like, no, it's wrong to drop nuclear weapons on people. And if you find yourself arguing that it's a good thing to drop nuclear weapons on people, then you are evil. Like, it's it's not a it's not a tough one, right? It's right. not a hard call for you. It's not a hard call for me. So. With that in mind, like, why would you want nuclear weapons? It's like just a mindless, childish sort of intellectual exercise to justify, like, oh, no, it's really good because someone else will get it. How about no? How about, like, spending all of your effort to prevent this from happening? Would you kill baby Hitler, you know, famously? Right. Um, so I don't know why we're sitting back and allowing this to happen if we really believe it will extinguish the human race or enslave the human race. Like... That was the transition into AI, but this topic is going to be on the nuclear bomb. I'm against dropping nuclear bombs on innocent people. That's, there's no circumstance in which I would justify it. None. It doesn't exist. I do agree you need it for defense, but that's a different topic. So Tucker is wrong there, but that's not... I'm talking about are you defending the use of the nuclear bomb? And this was a separate part of the interview, but I think this was very point, poignant on the topic here. You know what I mean? Like someone like Liz Cheney, who's got like a really sad and barren personal life. A lot of them are this way. Weird personal life, failed personal life. Like they don't have people who love them. They don't have kids who respect them. And so Adam Kinzinger or whatever, they're all kind of the same. The more broken they are inside, the more focused they are on like war and foreign policy because it gives them a feeling of, of power and strength and success. Like I can't get my wife to respect me I can't get my kids to listen to me. I can't pass any meaningful domestic agenda. But what I can do is bomb the living shit out of a foreign country. I think that applies to a lot of politicians. TNT Cycles PDX says war is wrong. Stop acting like there's a moral way to do it. Um, I don't I don't even know if I would even phrase it like that. I will say let's let's use an example. Somebody comes through your crib and they do horrible things uh, to your family in the crib. And they run away and they go to a mansion that houses, or let's say they run away to a school. They run away to a school with a thousand citizens and maybe there's like 10 in the gang that did the horrible things in your crib. You support dropping a weapon on that area because of what they did in your crib? We're gonna have to start looking in the mirror and figuring out where we stand on stuff. I absolutely do not. Easy for me to say because it hasn't happened. Am I saying that maybe I would be flawed in the moment? I don't know. But I do know I can say now clearly that is the wrong thing to do. It is absolutely the wrong thing to do. There is no, it doesn't matter. People get into the alternatives and some people say, well, and I'll, I might get into a little bit of that of where Japan was, they're going to surrender or no, they weren't, they weren't going to surrender. And that's irrelevant from the point of what Tucker is saying. Absolutely not under any, and not under any circumstances do I defend that. And it's the same take. And you're going to hear Ben Shapiro here, Ben Shapiro. Why did Ben Shapiro get into his feelings about this? Really weird. Here's Ben Shapiro and his feelings about it. He didn't mention, well, he didn't mention, he did mention Tucker, I believe in this. 
Let's listen. There's a weird horseshoe theory thing that's happening here. We've talked about it before on the program, that you have this constellation of far leftists who are rather friendly toward Hamas, who generally are isolationist on foreign policy, but they're isolationist on foreign policy mainly because they believe that the United States is a nefarious force in the world. They're sort of Howard Zinn or Noam Chomsky with regard to American foreign policy. No, that's not the take. The, the take is it's none of our business, so we, why are we implementing ourselves in other people's business? You can, ha you can do business dealings with other – nobody has a take where you can't do trade, you can't do business dealings with other countries. What we're talking about is, like, for example, there was this story in Pakistan. Pakistan was there, – there's a – I believe it's an oil pipeline between Iran and Pakistan. And the side on, – on the Iranian side, it's done – Pakistan needs to build their, their side of it. And for some reason, the U.S. is like, we're going to sanction you, probably because of the Iranian nuclear stuff. And it's like, no, that's stay out of their business. Do you have a better business deal? I'm all for making diplomatic reaching out and business deals. You see how this is a disingenuous take? That America, America is evil because we're not doing like natural business type deals. We're just interfering with people's lives. Other countries who generally are isolationist on foreign policy, but they're isolationist on foreign policy mainly because they believe that the United States is a nefarious force in the world. They're sort of- No, no, it doesn't have to be. It, it has been. Why has it been that? Is because we're looking at starting war, putting up military bases, and interfering in other people's business. So just a terrible take. It's a straw man argument. That's Who's making that argument? But Howard Zinn or Noam Chomsky with regard to American foreign policy. America is actually bad. That horseshoe theory That's has now the swung take. all the way around and it includes some people on the right. Now, as we'll talk about in a moment, when it comes to isolationism, as we've discussed, there are a bunch. And who cares? Like, is it a whole horseshoes to the right? I, I don't care. Is it the right take or not? Of different perspectives within the isolationist perspective. There is the we should not get involved in foreign conflicts, no matter what perspective, because we need the money here at home which means that you're also in favor of cutting spending by the government on a wide variety of other subjects. There's also an isolationism that suggests that whenever America gets involved in foreign conflicts, that tends to taint the United States, not it's about the United States tainting the rest of the world. But there is a theory that has now risen on the right that there is something deeply malign about the United States, something deeply wrong with the United States. That's not, that's not the take. That's not the take. Be more precise than that. You're an orator. The take is our, our, the U.S. government is unchecked. It's, I mean, it's completely rogue at this point. And I'm not going to recover everything that we talk about. It's about how the government is out of control and has become an enemy to the, its own people, unchecked by anything. We just found out that Joe Biden's DOJ was involved in the library, the National Archives, and raiding Mar-a-Lago. That's illegal. It's obstruction of, I'm not a lawyer, but it, this is getting into abuse of power, obstruction of justice. I mean, but there's no checks and balances because who's going to, who in the DOJ is going to investigate the DOJ? And after it's done, that's the, tomorrow they're going to be doing oral arguments for the, um, the, the immunity case with Trump. And the concern here is, if they say there's no, if they say there's immunity, it, are they going to apply it fairly? Or if they say if there's not immunity, are they going to apply it fairly? So the the question is, is America itself? No, nobody's saying the Constitution's bad. I mean, America is really, America is a collection of people who believe in the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. Nobody's saying that's bad. They're saying that there's corrupt people in charge that are bad the rest of the world. But there is a theory that has now risen on the right that there is something deeply malign about the United States, something deeply wrong with the United States. This was made apparent over the weekend. Tucker Carlson was on Joe Rogan's show. Obviously, I'm very friendly with Joe. I think Joe does a great job during his interviews. And there was a clip from this interview that went particularly viral. This is a clip in which Tucker Carlson calls the United States evil for having dropped the atomic bomb. I don't know if that's the exact quote. That's not even the exact quote. Tucker Carlson said, and he's going to play it again, so I might just fast forward to that one part. The Tucker Carlson said, dropping the bomb is evil. I don't know if he said America is evil. He's, he's basically saying that act was evil. On Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945, ending World War II, 
and then suggest that anyone who would just... You don't think that's an evil act? Are you serious? I mean, I think we're so far removed. Do you understand the, the murder of 200,000 people? Innocent people. Most of the people uh, in Hiroshima and Nagasaki were not military people that were attacked. You, we can't agree that that's evil? What are we doing? Where, where are we getting our morals from? They didn't do anything. You have some type of rage inside of you that you got to deal with. Justify that is also evil, which is a very traditionally left-wing perspective. It is not traditionally a particularly right-wing perspective because most people on the conservative side of the aisle tend to believe that America is a force for good in the world. And as well, so he just so you see where the the definition of conservatism comes in. He's equating approving of the the atomic bomb, the usage of the atomic atomic bomb to conservatism. Conservatism. He just said if you're against it, that's a leftist position. And number one, who cares? But he's the one saying it. If you're against it, you're a leftist. If you support the atomic bomb and the unliving of 200,000 people, then you're a conservative. If you say that that's a good thing, then you're a conservative. Why? I'll tie that in in a second. Why is that? Why? Yep. Particularly right-wing perspective, because most people on the conservative side of the aisle tend to believe that America is a force for good in the world. And as we'll discuss, it turns out that dropping the atomic bomb on Japan was necessary for ending World War II and likely saved millions of lives, both American and Japanese. He's saying that dropping the atomic bomb was a force for good? Are you serious? What if we had to drop the atomic bomb on a, I'm not gonna name any group because I don't want any misconstruing. Maybe it's a group that maybe he cares about a lot. What if there was a bomb that was dropped on, on a group that he cared about a lot? Do you think he would have the same take? Are you crazy? He thinks that the people that he reveres, their lives mean more than you and I. That's what it is. That's what this is all about. If you end up saving more lives than are cost by the dropping of the atomic bomb, then... Do you hear how crazy this argument is? Listen to this. Hopefully it doesn't... My, it's a long video, so it's going to always do that loading thing. Do you hear how crazy this is? He's arguing that dropping the bomb saved lives. Yeah, we've talked about it before on the program. What? For ending world was dropping. This like, is insane. That there are that there are no other players in the world, for example, trying to develop nuclear weapons. The fact is, the Nazis were trying to develop nuclear weapons. There was, in fact, a nuclear arm. I do agree. I I've already stated Ben is absolutely right on that. You have to defend. You have to build the defenses. No different than having the weapon for two way in your house. But that doesn't mean I'm going to use the weapon that's that I have for defense in the crib to go chase down 200,000 innocent people. That's those are two different things. Developing it for defense is absolute. You have to using it in that way, unacceptable. Arms race that was happening at the time. Not only that, as it turns out, the Soviet Union then developed nuclear weapons. Okay, and agreed. it is mutually assured destruction and nuclear deterrence agreed. that has kept the world largely from sinking into another World War III-like mass casualty morass because of the horror of dropping the nuclear bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in the first place. Yeah, but the, they don't acknowledge if the other countries had the same power, it would have never been dropped because it's not good to drop it and you don't want it dropped on you. When he says things like, how exactly would you justify why, why are we talking about how many lives it would save it's just wrong to drop the bomb well no actually if you end up saving more lives than are cost by the dropping of the atomic bomb then it is morally justified to drop the atomic bomb and that happens to be the reality of the situation he just said it's morally justified to drop the atomic bomb that's what that's what we're arguing about in 2024 that's what i said when october 7th had i told you in when october 7th happened they would be fine with using the atomic bomb. If you use this argument he has here, he would use it on Iran, Iraq, uh, the, any one of his, uh, Lebanon. If he, could, if he could say for sure that the dust wouldn't spread to the place that he cares about, he would do it for every other country in the world and say, I'm saving lives. That's the argument. Who says that you're saving lives? Just making it up.
You, we don't know what you're talking about. Number one. Number two is just bad on face, no matter what. That's the same argument. So you see why he has to have that argument. Because it's not about the why are we arguing about the atomic bomb? Nobody cares. Right? This, nobody, the, we, none, nobody really cares. This is the, the movie that came out, the recent Oppenheimer came up. This is obviously old news. Why is it coming up right now? Because what they've done in Gaza is the exact same thing, basically. I mean, it's almost like a mother of all bombs. There's no radiation. But they can't, you can't have the position that it was wrong, morally wrong, to drop the two bombs and say what Israel is doing is right. You can't have those two positions. So now we're arguing via proxy, like U.S. using Ukraine as a proxy, and Iran or whoever else using Hezbollah or whoever else as their proxies, the Houthis or whoever else. We're now doing proxy debates. We're debating the nuclear bombs. Was it Fat Man and Little Boy or Little Boy and Fat Man? I forget which ones. I actually went to New Mexico recently and saw the replicas. We're now arguing that as a proxy to argue, to justify Israel and Gaza. That's what's happening here. And he's the one that equated it with conservatism, not me. He did that. You heard that already. Wild. Steve Johnson says morally justified on something that could never be proven is just a guess at best. Yeah, and let's say you're right. It's still not morally justified for me. I'm not, it's not moral. It's not, a, it's not justified. Ben's distorting of the entire thing because Ben is establishment. No, that's not specific enough. It's because he's, he's, he's blood through Zionist. Tucker has been getting, I, I don't even like the term, but I can't, I mean, there's a reason why people use it. It's, that's the term that should be used. Tucker has been getting better and better since he got off the establishment leash and Ben is the other team now. Yep, that's what's happening. So Tucker got off of Fox News. Tucker couldn't say any of this stuff on top Fox News. So Tucker is now off of Fox News. Fox News, I don't think they even let them do those type of interviews. So he's now off of Fox News and now we're finding out who Tucker really is. Tucker, I don't think Tucker has changed his take at all. I mean, it's, everybody evolves, but since he left Fox News, I think he's the same guy. Now he's able to speak freely and say how he feels. And now you've got a whole, the Daily Wire represents a whole conservative movement that is Israel first. And so now the, the Daily Wire has to jump in just like they jumped in. They suck up all the talent. Let's go to Matt Walsh. They sucked up the talent of Matt Walsh.